Good morning, it's Ariana Newcomer. This is Wisdom Wednesdays. I am a Dove Oracle Priestess. And today I want to talk about closet visionaries. Um, I had a great assist from someone at a conference that I went to recently in how I talk about what I do. And I have been saying that I mentor women visionaries and change makers. And this woman said, you know, that would make me feel like it wasn't me because I wouldn't call myself a visionary. Now, most of the women I work with really are visionaries. And I thought, and I said, huh, what if I said closet visionaries? And she said, that would really call to me. <laughs> and the truth is that many of the women that I work with and that have been in the wise woman immersion, have been closet visionaries. Um, I have a dear friend, Dr. Maria Michael, who is a Lakota Diné elder. And she has told me that in, in years past, uh, women would go into the Moon Lodge, at least I think it was Dr. Dr. Maria, maybe it was Brooke Medicine Eagle, <laughs> who told me these stories, that women would go into the Moon Lodge during their time of bleeding in the month, and they would would uh, you know hold ceremony and visions together. And when women went past the age of bleeding, in other words, we come into menopause, then there would be grandmother lodges, and the per the job of the grandmothers would be to hold the visions for the community. So instead of just holding visions for the families or perhaps the immediate uh, group, they would hold the visions for all, for everyone. And I am really passionate about being a wise elder and not being, I'm, I'm not willing to be diminished and to be seen as having no value anymore and to, uh, to just be ignored because I'm old. So, uh, Many of the women I work with are a little bit older, so in 50s or 60s or even 80s. Some of my students have been in their 80s. But this message is also really important for women who are younger. Part of our cultural silencing, part of the cultural silencing that has come out of what I like to call the dominator culture rather than the patriarchy, uh, is the silencing of women's voices. And it's also been the silencing of women's visions. It's much harder for women to start businesses, to get funding uh, from the, the hedge funds and the people who are the, uh, the, most of the people who are putting money into startup businesses are men, and have been. There are women who are starting funds that are helping other women start businesses. But when women are pitching ideas, too, it's, they're very often not paid attention to, not listened to. So we're very used to, as women, having our ideas and our visions be devalued and discounted. This is one of the ways that, uh, that we have been really damaged by this dominator culture. And Dominator culture has damaged men too, just in different ways. I'm just going to keep repeating that because I don't want to demonize the, the guys. I love men. They're important to me. I have two sons and uh, a dear partner that I adore. So, um, But this, this thing about women having to be these kind of closet visionaries, we have big visions and we have big dreams. And these times are truly calling us out. We have to come out of the closet with our visions and dreams because truthfully the more women who come forward and begin starting businesses, running businesses, getting in the executive suites, running for office, being in the congresses, in the state houses, <clears throat> even in the top job, the presidencies or the prime ministers, the more women we are going to get in the more balanced our visions are going to become as humanity and the more chance we have to actually create the change that we need if we're going to have a planet we can continue to live on as a species. So I love, 
I love mentoring and nurturing women's visions, our deep visions, our deep dreams, which are usually not just for ourselves, but also for the greater good, for humanity, for nature, for the planet. Um, and so my new statement about what I do is I mentor closet visionaries to heal the wounds of cultural silencing and claim your wisdom, your value, and your voice so you can joyfully express your divine purpose. How does that sound? Leave me a comment if that resonates with you, if you know someone for whom that might resonate. It's so important. Now, many of the women that I have worked with have gone on to, to start doing more and speaking up more. They all find that they're able to more easily speak up and speak out for themselves. They won't accept the shaming and silencing that has has been that they have accepted in the, and have accepted in the past. They find that their relationships improve without really trying because of the work that we do around partnership, beginning with partnership with self and our inner work in harmonizing our inner parts and uh, honoring ourselves on these deep, deep levels. And then uh, met with many of my clients and students, I do specific work around voice because as I've talked about before, we have unconscious stories that we hold that cause us to actually hold our voices back. So when we can really claim our voices, claim our wisdom, claim our value, then we get to bring our visions out of the closet and we start actually bringing ourselves into the world in a way that is going to make a difference. One of my um, former Wise Women Immersion members is bringing the, the partnership uh, way into kids. She's working with 4-H kids, teaching them about partnership and the partnership culture. Uh, another one is doing a lot of work in her local community with um, things to help heal the climate. Um, uh, another, another one is starting to write a book. She's finally getting her voice out there. Another client is finally working on getting that talk finished so that she can start giving her talk that she's been dying to do about mindfulness and how that can help people in the tech world become less stressed and more productive and enjoy their lives more. So we have so much to give. And especially as elder women who may be in some kind of transition, might be an empty nest, a you know, child or children launched into college finally and okay, now what is, it's time for me. What am I going to do next? Because most of my clients and students are also not interested in just sitting on the couch or being a grandma or, um, uh, you know, just fading away into obscurity. Uh, another one of my Wise Women Immersion members is starting a business now. She's retired as a, an RN, which she had done for many, many years, and she is now doing a business uh, with health and, health and fitness and helping people become healthier. And uh, so there are all kinds of different ways that we help. And one of the things that we work with in the Wise Women Immersion is something called subtle activism, which is a way that we can consciously create a group energy field and set protections and then begin to actually send our energy out, our collective energy into our group energy, into the collective to help energetically heal the collective. There's a lot of research going on now about subtle energy and how it works. And these things really do work and really can make a difference. And my students have found this incredibly powerful. They love the subtle activism practice. Many of them have chosen to continue in a monthly circle with me so that we can continue to do our subtle activism and continue to support each other. So I'm just beginning to enroll a new group for the Wise Women Immersion. 
if this sounds interesting to you to become part of a small circle of supportive women who are all coming out of the closet, claiming their visions, claiming their wisdom, their value and their voices, and being getting not just being in a group for support and group healing, but also getting one on one mentoring time with me. Then I put a link in the comments and check out the course page and book a time to talk with me. And let's see if we are a fit to work together. See you next time.